everyone. I hope you're all doing really well. So in today's video, I wanted to try something a little different. And I'm out here at Antelope Island, just outside of Salt Lake City. And I'm gonna try and combine wildlife photography and landscape photography. And what I kind of mean by that is, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a wildlife photographer. I don't really have that skill set, and I can appreciate some of those really, really talented wildlife photographers um, and kind of the skill set needed to do that. My skill set is definitely more on the landscape photography side, and I want to see if I can kind of incorporate those wildlife photography elements, specifically the wildlife, into my landscape photography. So just over here, we kind of have this sweeping it's kind of a small little mountain range on the island and on Antelope Island we kind of have a herd of buffalo that that lives here and there a good chunk of that herd is just over here kind of at the base of this this little range of mountains so I think what I'm going to try to do is kind of walk up here behind them and shoot shoot them in the foreground with that mountain range in the background and Today's a little bit different as well because I have my normal Sony a7 III and I have a 24 to 70 and my 70 to 300 and I also have a Nikon D500 that I'm borrowing with a 200 to 500 on it and that's an APS-C crop sensor so that'll give me like 300 to 750 which should be plenty. Um, so I might play around a little with that, that might be kind of fun. But yeah anyways I'm just going to hike up here a little bit to the, ba to the base of these hills and see if I can find a good spot to shoot these buffalo. Alright, so I think I found my first shot here and it's going to be a super simple one. I have a group of buffalo just kind of just out here in the grass with a mountain kind of way, way off in the distance. And I have the 200 to 500 on the D500. And I'm going to be at about 200 to 250, 300. Um, and it looks really good because with these longer lenses, you get that nice compression with your kind of background and foreground elements. And for this lens, I'm shooting as wide open as I can. You don't, we're not really getting any kind of shallow depth of field just with the way this composition is. I wouldn't mind if that hill, there's kind of a hill just in front of me that's a little too low to be in the frame. If that was in the frame, I would love it. You kind of get that nice separation there right at the, right at the foreground. But the buffalo for me here are just kind of an add-on. This is more about the layers. So I kind of have this gold, the golden grass as my first layer. The mountains kind of has that middle layer. And then the sky kind of has that that final final top layer there. And yeah, it's just about those colors, that gold, white, and then blue. And I'm gonna have the buffalo right kind of dotted along the bottom frame there. And it's just gonna be a little a little something extra. But even though I have this on a tripod, I still am concerned a little bit about shutter speed just because the buffalo are moving a little bit and it's such a long lens and we do have a little bit of breeze. So I'm going to shoot this probably at maybe one, one eight hundredth of a second. It's pretty bright out. It's not a big deal, really. So I'll be ISO 100, one eight hundredth of a second, f5.6. And I'm shooting on continuous right now just because in case anything cool does happen, I want to be there to capture it. So now normally I have a shutter delay you know, that two second delay just for, for steadiness, sharpness on my landscape shots. I'm not really going for that today. I think today is more about what are the buffalo doing? What is their interaction with the landscape? And because if something, like I said before, I have it on continuous, if something exciting does happen, I don't, I don't want to be, my camera to be going beep, 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 doot, and then taking the shot, right? I want to be able to capture it as soon as I hit that, hit that shutter. So we'll take a look at that. I kind of like that, it's simple. Like I said, I like the layers. I like the buffalo right there across the bottom. Um, 
now the most important thing with the buffalo in this shot really is probably not to cut any of them off. I don't want half a buffalo in my shot because I'm not. This herd is a little bigger than, um, it's bigger than what I'm taking a picture of. You know, I've sectioned off some of the buffalo on the left there. And they're constantly moving around, so I'm going to take a few more shots because I'd love it if they could separate themselves a little bit and we get those distinct buffalo instead of kind of a mass of buffalo in our shots. Yeah, I think that'll come out nice after I edit that. Um, I think post-processing wise I don't know if it's going to need much and you know I have the sun behind me so my dynamic range is not really that high yeah I'll put it on the screen for you and we'll see how that comes out So I just grabbed that shot of the buffalo kind of just behind where the camera is now with those layers. But that's not really, when I walked up here, that really, that really wasn't the shot I envisioned. The shot I envisioned was actually this way, with this mountain range here trailing off into the distance, and then the larger snowier mountains kind of in the background. And we have another, I guess it's the same herd of buffalo, but another cluster of them just here. And I couldn't position myself on high enough land down there to get the buffalo and the mountains, if that makes sense. And the only way to do that would have been to get way too close, in my opinion. But for me, that's that's the shot I'm going for here. So I'm just watching these buffalo here. I'm seeing if they can move a little bit that way. Um, it's a little different composing shots than what I'm used to. You know, I'm used to composing shots where things are still not moving. And if a composition isn't there, it might not be there. But here, I think that composition is there. I just need the buffalo to move. So I'm kind of watching them, keep an eye on them, see if it'll just go that way a little bit. Just because I think that shot, we're shooting a little bit into the sun that way. The sun's gonna set behind this range here. Everything shooting into the sun is just a little bit more dynamic. That dynamic range is a little bit greater, a little bit more contrasty, a little bit more pop to it. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. As I'm talking now, they're actually coming closer to me, which is not what I want. I want them to go the other way. But we'll see. I might, uh, there's another herd just up here. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet. But there was actually a couple other nice spots that I drove past on the way in. But I really want this shot down here. Just because that, that, that to me is spectacular. I would take that shot without the buffalo in it. But because I'm here and there are buffalo there, I would love to have the buffalo in it, right? So yeah, I'm gonna wait around a little bit, see if they move. Uh, if they don't, it's not a big deal. I'll just probably head back on the road a little bit that way, hike back down, um, and see if we can't find some more buffaloes because this range extends extends the length of the island. And I know there's a shot where with a buffalo in front of it with that sun gonna fall behind those mountains. And honestly, I got a little bit of time. It's, it's three o'clock right now. And the best shot might be as that sun dips. So we got a little bit of time. I'm gonna hang out here. And hopefully those buffalo move. So that herd I was photographing to the north started walking towards me and I was kind of up on this little hill. And that herd to the south that I want to photograph with those mountains wasn't moving and I don't know if they're they're joining up or what's happening but I didn't want to get stuck in between that so I kind of walked back down the hill here where I feel a little better about things they're just so big and so peaceful and so slow moving but I'm sure you know it's like anything you don't you don't want to mess with them you don't want to surprise them give them your give them their space This herd to the south still isn't isn't moving the way that I want it to. And in fact, there's one just staring at me. We'll see. I'll give it a little more time.
So I never ended up getting those uh, buffalo to cooperate with me <laughs> in taking that shot that I was thinking of with the mountain range and that, and that larger mountain in the background. That being said, it's still a fantastic shot without the buffalo, so I'm going to go ahead and take it right now and I'll show it to you. So I think the best of the light is probably gone now, but that was really difficult. Uh, I went in with these expectations of shooting these landscapes with the buffalo in the landscape, and uh, that was really difficult. You know, the buffalo didn't cooperate, and uh, there's no reason they should, really. Um, but having been here now and having that experience, I definitely want to come back, probably for a sunrise, I think. I think I scouted out some locations. I have some locations bookmarked, uh, some shots bookmarked that with early morning light would really help we would really help that composition out as opposed to the you know this is the sun sunset here and we really lost the light on the side of the mountain that i was shooting on all that being said i think i might have got one shot here at the end with a little just two or three buffalo here in front of the mountain with the with a little bit of a sunset we didn't really get a great one it kind of got snuffed out by some low clouds but all in all, it was fun. Uh, this Antelope Island is just an absolute photographer's paradise. Uh, I'll definitely come back, but there's all sorts of rock formations and bushes and snowy mountains and just a just a, such a vast array of, of things to shoot. So yeah, I'm gonna end things there. So I think probably in a week or two, you'll probably see kind of part two of this wildlife landscape idea because today didn't really work out how, how I'd hoped. Uh, but having done it once now, I think I, ha I have some better ideas for the next time. Thank you so much as always for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that, even though it didn't work out how I'd hoped. But I'll leave a few photos here for you at the end for you to look at. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed that, consider hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button. It'd really help me out. Thanks everyone. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.